Lesson 11.8, we're going to discuss the area of combined rectangles. And it's really important that you saw the previous videos when we first started talking about area that are linked in the description, starting with 11.4. We can break apart a figure to find the area by breaking it into two or more rectangles. We find the area of those smaller rectangles and add their areas together to get a total area of the original figure. Here we have a yellow rectangle and it's four units in length and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units in width. That's four times eight. And we can use the distributive property to break apart an array. We learned that back in video 5.3, which of course is linked in the description. We take the eight and we break it apart into a five and a three five units and three units. Now we have four for length and five for width, that's four times five, and four for length and three for width, that's four times three. Four times five is equal to 20, plus the four times three, which is equal to 12, and it's equal to 32 square units for the entire yellow rectangle. Breaking apart the eight, we used the distributive property. The total number of unit squares for the original rectangle will equal the total of all the areas of its parts. And we can break apart a figure into any size rectangles. It may be easier for us to break apart a figure into sizes that will be easier to multiply their length times their width. Here we have this green rectangle. It is six inches in length, and it's nine inches in width. So we have six times nine for its area. And we can use the distributive property and break this nine into a five and a four. So we have six times five for the area of this rectangle, and six times four for the area of this rectangle. Six times five is equal to 30, plus six times four is equal to 24, the area for the green rectangle is 54 square inches. And we can check our answer by counting each unit square. We can count each one of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on. We can count every single one of them to see if there are 54 there to make sure we did our math correctly. Using the distributive property, we found that we could break apart a rectangle into smaller rectangles and add the area of each smaller rectangle to find the total area. We can break apart a figure into any size rectangles. We have two identical figures. In this one, we broke it apart this way. So we have a length of two and a width of eight, that's two times eight. Here, we have a length of three and a width of four, so we have three times four. Two times eight is equal to 16, and three times four is equal to 12. 16 plus 12 is equal to 28 square units. And we can take the same figure and break it apart this way. Now, we have a length of five and a width of four for this rectangle. And we have a length of two and a width of four for this rectangle. Five times four is equal to 20, plus two times four is equal to this eight. 20 plus eight is equal to 28 square units. It's the same amount of square units. We will get the same total area. Again, here we have two identical figures, but in this one, we broke it apart right here with this vertical line, we have a length of one, two, three, four, five, and a width of one, two, three, four, five for this first rectangle, that's five times five. And for this one, we have a length of five and a width of two, so that's five times two. Five times five is equal to 25. Five times two is equal to 10. We add the two areas, 25 plus 10, is equal to 35 square units. So for this rectangle, it's identical to that one, our line is going horizontally, and our first rectangle has a length of one, two, and a width of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have two times seven. For our second rectangle, 
we have a length of 3 and a width of 7. So that's 3 times 7. 2 times 7 is equal to 14. 3 times 7 is equal to 21. When we add the two areas together, 14 plus 21 is equal to 35 square units. So it didn't matter how we broke this rectangle apart, we ended up with the same total area of 35 square units. Here again we have two identical figures, and they may not look at it like it because of the way I've got them split up and broken apart, but they are two identical figures. In this one, I put a vertical line here and a vertical line here, and in this one, I ran a horizontal line going across and breaking it apart that way. For this figure, we have a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and a width of 3, so that's 7 times 3. For this second one, we have a length of 3 and a width of 3, so that's 3 times 3. And this one we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the length and 4 for the width, so that's 5 times 4. We need to multiply 7 times 3, which is equal to 21, and 3 times 3, which is equal to 9, and 5 times 4, which is equal to 20. Then total up, get a sum total of all the areas. 21 plus 9 plus 20 is equal to 50. So the area for this figure is 50 square units. Now when we broke it apart going this way, we broke it into 1, 2, 3 rectangles. Our first one is 4 with length and 3 with width, so that's 4 times 3. This one is a 3 for the length and 10 for the width. So that's 3 times 10, and this last little one is 2 times 4. We do our multiplication. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 10 is equal to 30. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Then we add them. 12 plus 30 plus 8 is 50. And again, the area is 50 square units. So it didn't matter how we broke the figure apart into rectangles. We just need to make sure that we're making full, complete rectangles. What if I put the line there? Well, I don't have three rectangles anymore because this is not a rectangle. I would have to put another line here and another line here to have one, two, three, four rectangles. Sorry about the focus there. Every time I put my hand in front of the camera, it does that. So we have to make sure that we're making full rectangles. That way we can multiply length times width. Here we've got this figure, and we can see there's a piece missing here, there's a piece missing here. We can break this into one, two, three rectangles by putting some vertical lines. Now we've broken it apart into three separate rectangles. And it's telling us that one unit square is one square centimeter, so we know our label for our answer is going to have to be square centimeters. So let's make our equation here. Let's write our equation. We can see for the first rectangle that it's got a length of 4. And it's got a width of 4, doesn't it? Coming across this way. So we have 4 times 4. For our second one, we have a length of 3. 1, 2, 3, and we have a width of 4. And for our third one, we have a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it has a width of 4. Now we can do our multiplication. 4 times 4 is equal to 16. 3 times 4 is equal to 12, and 5 times 4 is equal to 20. Now we can add these up to get a total area. 16 plus 12 plus 20 is equal to 48, so we know the area of this entire figure is 48 square centimeters. Mr. Lee drew a diagram of his backyard and the area where he wants to build a brick barbecue. How much more area will be grass than barbecue? Now to solve this, we need to find the difference between the two areas, the area of grass and the area of barbecue. 
and we can break apart the backyard into four rectangles. And notice it's telling us that one unit square is equal to one square foot. So each one of these little squares is one square foot. So now we have four separate rectangles. One, two, three, four. The grass is three of the rectangles and the barbecue is one of the rectangles. It wants to know how much more area will be grass, green grass, than the brown barbecue area. We find the area for the grass. Our first rectangle is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in length and three in width. So we have eight times three. Our second one is five in length and four in width. So we have five times four. And our third one, this is eight, and we have a three for width. So we have eight times three again. Eight times three is equal to 24. 5 times 4 is equal to 20, 8 times 3 again is equal to 24, and now we total their areas, 24 plus 20 plus 24, and that's equal to 68 square feet for the green grass area. For the barbecue area, we have a length of 3 and a width of 4, and 3 times 4 is equal to 12. Each unit square is a square foot, so we know it's 12 square feet. And it said how much more area will be grass than barbecue. So now that we have each of those areas, we can do 68 for the grass area minus 12 for the barbecue area, and that's equal to 56 square feet more grass. So be careful. Sometimes you have to read a word problem more than once to fully understand what it's asking of you. You need to make sure your answer is answering what it's asking. Alicia has a rectangular bedroom with a rectangular closet, and each unit square is equal to one square meter. Break apart the figure into rectangles. So what is the total area of Alicia's bedroom? Now see this word with? With means the area includes the closet. So that bedroom area is with the closet. So we need the whole thing. And we can make a vertical line or a horizontal line to break it apart. If we put a horizontal line here, then we have a three meter length times a five meter length, that's three times five, and a one meter length times two meter length. One times two is equal to two. Three times five is equal to 15. We total them and get 17 square meters. Now we can also put a vertical line, and we can break it apart this way. Now we've got three meters for a length and three meters for a width, and four meters for a length and two meters for a width. Three times three is equal to nine, four times two is equal to eight, and nine plus eight is equal to 17 square meters. So it didn't matter how we broke it apart to make rectangles, we ended up with the same total area. Use the distributive property to find the area of the figure. Write your multiplication and addition equations. So we can break apart this figure into any size rectangles, but it wants us to use the distributive property. That means the first number that we're going to multiply is going to be the same in both equations. And notice it says equations, so it wants multiplication and addition equations, more than one, that's plural. So for rectangle one, each unit square is one square centimeter, we have a length of eight and a width of five. So we have eight times five, that's equal to 40. For rectangle two, we have eight for our length again and five for our width, that's eight times five equals 40 again. For our addition equation, we have 40 plus 40 for the total areas, and that's 80 square centimeters. Now, that's writing it as separate equations. We can do it like I've been doing it and write one equation. We write 8 times 5 for the first rectangle plus 8 times 5 for the second rectangle, and that's equal to 40 plus 40, which is equal to 80 square centimeters. So you can write it as separate equations if that's easier for you, or one long equation like I do. But remember, to use the distributive property, 
we have to have one of the factors that's the same in both equations. In this one, it just happened to be that they're both the same. See that? So remember when you're trying to find the area of combined rectangles, we can break that rectangle apart or that figure apart into any size rectangles as long as we're making full rectangles and we can add their total areas together to get the total of the entire figure. In our next lesson, 11.9, we're going to go back to talking about perimeter and I hope I'll see you there and I hope you have a really good day. Bye.